Hello, I am going to start reading now. Musashi's Book of Five Rings The Definitive Interpretation of Miyamoto Musashi's Classic Book of Strategy By Stephen F. Kaufman Hanshi Tanten This book is dedicated to my father, Jack Kaufman, a warrior in his own right, and to the legacy of Miyamoto Musashi. Preface or Preface Musashi is well known to most martialists. He is considered the Kensei, Sword Saint of Japan, while his teachings are essentially centered around swordsmanship, his teachings fall without question into the domain and study for practitioners of all the martial arts, including karate, judo, western fencing, and other killing forms as well, but only if they are used to take life in combat. The Book of Five Rings is Miyamoto Musashi's teaching on the art of strategy in combat based on swordsmanship. It must be understood that whether or not you practice the martial arts or use the teachings for other principles, there are profound truths to be gleaned from this work, Musashi's legacy. My own personal involvement in the art of karate for nearly 40 years, along with my 10 year study of the rings, has led me to take the responsibility of interpreting these teachings for the martialist who wishes to understand the true way. This is a profound work on life and death in combat. It is not for the immature. I do not advocate the taking of life for any reason. Keep in mind that Musashi's work was done at a time when Mortal Kombat was a way of life. The teachings of Musashi and this interpretation are to explain the principles and philosophies of a warrior's life in ancient Japan. About the translation, this is not another book about Japanese business strategy. There is a significant difference between not getting a deal signed and having your head cut off. Business is mental, war is mental and physical. The true warrior has no difficulty understanding this difference, regardless of all the hype suggesting that business is war. It absolutely is not. This is a book for the martialist, not the martial artist. The concept of art can lead to a misunderstanding of the warrior's purpose and preclude a subjective relationship to form and function. Or paradoxically, the warrior is all passion, although he shows none and kills without hesitation. The reality is one neither of sub subjectivity nor objectivity. Development of technique is essential to understand to understanding of purpose. Once a specific technique has been understood, the warrior stops using it on a conscious level, because in combat, having a conscious identity imposes limitations. Knowing how to do something and actually doing it are not the same thing. Taking a life is not the same thing as taking money. This fundamental premise is the reason why samurai despise the merchant class, even while understanding the need for mer the merchant mentality. Cold-blooded businessmen, however, do not understand the true way of the warrior. The majority of translations of Musashi's work available on the market are little more than intellectual exercises in translating Japanese to English. They do not adequately express the feeling required to study life and death confrontations and therefore fall short of the mark. The present work has been done with the purpose of clearing up the misconceptions of naive westerners and easterners as to the real purpose of the five rings. It explains in depth, with additional definition, the truths that must be comprehended before it is possible to come to terms with the teachings of Musashi.
It is therefore to be studied as a universal explanation. With deep reference and profound homage to the Master, I take full responsibility for the interpretation of all concepts presented herein. Introduction My name is Miyamoto Musashi. I have killed over 60 men in fights and duels. When I was 60 years of age, I looked back upon my life and in a flash of wisdom, realized that all my victories were based on either great luck and innate ability, or perhaps the fact that the methods of other schools were inadequate. When I came to terms with my own skills and abilities, the realities of what I had accomplished held me to a higher principle that left me no choice but to depart from the commerce of the world, seek isolation, and tear my soul apart so that I could examine what I already seemed to instinctively know. I practiced and meditated constantly until I came to understand the workings of the spirit. I actually didn't read that last part right. It was... Oh, that's a long sentence. When I came to terms with my own skills and abilities, the reality of what I had accomplished held me to a higher principle that left me no choice but to depart from the commerce of the world, seek isolation, and tear my soul apart so that I could examine what I already seemed to know instinctively. I practiced and meditated constantly until I came to understand the workings of the spirit. I am considered to be the greatest swordman Japan has ever known. It was during my fights and duels that I developed my own style of two sword fighting. Although I was committed to my sword, I was also dedicated to learning painting, sculpture, and poetry. I instinctively felt it necessary to understand the arts and to be accomplished in them. But my prime focus was on swordsmanship. I was not a particularly religious person, although I know of Buddhism, Shintoism, and Confucianism, and am aware of their tenets. <coughs> what will be changed in my teachings with the passage of time cannot be known. There are, however, specific warrior attitudes that make good sense for the martialist. These warrior attitudes are succinct and definitive. It may seem that I am repeating the same thing over and over. While it is true that I am doing this, it is only to enforce my teachings upon you. By constant repetition, you will soon come to understand my way of strategy. I will not leave it to you to try and quickly grasp my ideas in passing. The Book of Five Rings is divided into five sections called Earth, Water, fire, wind, and nothingness, or void. Earth lays the groundwork for the study of the whole book. Water explains attitudes of warriorness through an understanding of strategy. Fire teaches fighting with the principles of earth and water. The book of wind describes the differences between my school's style and the style of other schools. The book of nothingness describes the way of nature as the true mode of being. I have not followed the paths of other men. I have lived without the benefit of a teacher and my own devices I have become a, the master of myself. And by my own devices I have become the master of myself. And thereby master of the sword and the brush, never differentiating between any of these arts. It should be understood that without the assistance of a teacher, many roads become open to a practitioner, some on the correct path and some on the incorrect path. It is not for everyone to be without guidance. Only a few, and they are exceptional, can make a journey to wisdom without a teacher. You must have extraordinary passion, patience, and self-discipline to make a journey alone. The goals must be understood definitive and no diversion can be acknowledged or permitted if you are to attain, a, attain enlightenment within the sphere of a chosen art. This is a very difficult road to travel and not many are made for it. 
It is frustrating, confusing, very lonely, certainly frightening, and it will sometimes make you think you do not have much sanity left to deal with the everyday surroundings of your world. Also, there is no guarantee that you will attain perfection. It must all come from inside you, without any preconceived notions on your part. And so we begin. The Book of Earth No man is invincible, and therefore no man can fully understand that which would make him invincible. Even with complete and thorough study, there is always the possibility of being defeated, and although one may be expert in a particular form, mastery is something a man never stops seeking to attain. It is doubtful that anyone truly understands the real way of strategy, much less truly lives it. Yet military, Yet military leaders must have some understanding of strategy, and they must pass it on to their warriors, regardless of limitations of their own understanding. There is no way to salvation, whatever the manner in which a man may proceed. All forms and variations are governed by the eternal intelligence of the universe that enables a man to approach perfection. It may be in the art of music and painting, or it may be in commerce, law, or medicine. It may be in the study of war or the study of peace. Each as is important each is as important as any other. Spiritual enlightenment, though religious no spiritual enlightenment through religious meditation such as Zen or in any way is as viable and functional as any way. Certainly, in the way of the sword or the fist, a person a person should study as they see fit. A warrior should have an understanding of the peaceful arts as well as the killing arts. This is the twofold way. If a man chooses a certain way, and seems to have no particular talent for this way, he can still become a master if he so chooses. By keeping at a particular form of study, a man can attain perfection, either in this life or the next, if a next life is believed. The warrior, however, understands that the end result of any study is a kind of death, sublime, not necessarily physical. Before the attainment of perfection, many different types of people have been known to die for either the right reasons or the wrong reasons. The only shame in dying incorrectly is to die a stupid and meaningless death. To die as a warrior means to have crossed swords and either won or lost without any consideration for winning or losing. There is just not enough time and generally there is not enough strength in the resolve of any man to do otherwise. In all accomplishments of war, the warrior understands that the only real measure of his ability lies in being able to beat men in fight, regardless of their nature. Failure in any other area is not to be construed as a true test of a warrior's mettle. The true virtue of strategy is in allowing us to overcome all odds in daily life and helping us attain the closest state we can to being one with the supreme power before going into battle. The development of warrior consciousness is an ongoing thing. Each new experience continually leads to new challenges. The way cannot be learned through frivolous contests in which the outcome is for the name of a school or a large trophy. It can only be realized where physical death is a reality. The Way of Strategy The way is a specific and determinately deliberate methodology. The ancient masters must be studied constantly without respite even when the practitioner thinks he has grasped the knowledge. It is important to realize that technique is not the end of an art. Those good in technique, regardless of the art they pursue, are not necessarily able to teach the true meaning of an art. 
beginning students who do not know this and who think that they are being brought to the threshold of understanding are not to blame so much as those who teach without understanding the inner and outer worlds of an, the art of which they profess to be masters. It is useless for people who look good in play competition to think in terms of being masters. They appear to understand and as a result permit their own self-importance to convince them that they are bearers of the truth. Only through a constant search from within based on one's own lifestyle can the truth be known. It is absolutely a personal thing. Commercialism does nothing to enhance the reality of truth, although it can lead one to the start of the path. A man cannot understand the perfection and imperfections of his chosen art if he cannot see the value in other arts. Following rules only permits development up to a point in technique. To advance farther, the student and the artist must learn and seek other knowledge. It makes sense to study other arts as well as those of strategy. Who has not learned something more about themselves by watching the activities of others? To learn the sword, study the guitar. To learn the fist, study commerce. To only study the sword will make you narrow-minded and will keep you from growing outward. Everything is for sale, including men's souls. A man cannot understand the art he is studying if he only looks for the end result without taking the time to delve deeply into the reasoning of the study. There is no purpose in trying to determine whether one is better than an another. If anything is everything, no. If anything is anything, then everything is everything. Do not confuse profit for with profitability. To sell yourself based on the design of your school's symbol is unfair to students and is moreover moronic because it fools the unknowing into thinking that skill is based on superficiality. Besides, it is bad karma and it will come back to haunt you. You cannot fool the spirit of the thing itself. It is a far greater wisdom than man can ever understand. In our society, there are four classes of people. Each fulfills appropriate functions and each is able to attain levels of perfection according to its own means. The specific ranks of the classes are in order of their importance to society. <laughs> the samurai, the farmer, the artisan, and finally the merchants. Each is respected and disrespected equally by the other classes. The samurais are warriors that live a higher ideal. The study of their weapons is their prime motivation. Farmers are next because they provide food needed for the masses. Artisans are the craftsmen and maker of weapons and other products. Merchants are a ridiculed class because they produce nothing except profit from the work of others. Artisans are the craftsmen and maker of weapons and other products. Merchants are a ridiculed class because they produce nothing except profit from the work of others. Yet it must be understood that each has a valuable and functional part within the structure of the society and that even though for example, the warrior class may despise the merchant class. We are all too aware of the need for them to maintain the economy. Money must be made to pay the army. Comparing the way of the craftsman to the strategy of a warrior. It is important to understand what the goal of an art is. Once that is understood, it is easy to pursue the spirit of it. To study carpentry, you study the correlation of materials, and so I can compare the way of the warrior to the way of the craftsman. To study the sword, you study war, weapons, and men. To study craftsmanship, you study the project, the tools, and men. 
you will succeed or fail in either one depending on your attitude towards the spirit of the thing. There can be no let up on your study, regardless of the path you choose. Even though you may have mastered a particular level, you must search constantly for still more understanding of your chosen art. If there is no discipline, how can there be a true realization of an ideal? How can a man be trusted to perform in society if he does not understand what society needs? To act in harmony with the environment of where you are, you must understand the need for certain rules. If you do not, then you will not be able to control others. If you cannot control others, then how can you expect to attain perfection in your own ideal? It is essential for the leader to know the rules of the game. Which rules work? Which rules do not work? Which rules can be changed to suit a particular need? Which rules, when changed, will create additional problems? And which will not? Craftsmen are familiar with the quality of the materials they use in their work. A man must not assume that another man's uniform or armament is an indication of his strength. Many warriors have always relied on the look of their armor to intimidate the enemy. Do not assume that what appears to be finely crafted goods will hold up under use. The truth is that strength lies in the interior of the warrior, in his heart, his mind, and his spirit. The same applies to weapons. An excellently crafted weapon is incapable of acting on its own accord. It must be wielded. The extent to which a weapon is well crafted is based solely on the ability of the is based solely on the ability of the craftsman. The strengths and weaknesses of the materials used must be understood by the craftsman. A merchant, on the other hand, must rely solely on his ability to manipulate others into believing that his goods are the best. That is the way of the merchant. The farmer knows when his produce is good and when it is inferior. That is the way of the farmer. The warrior knows in his heart when he is correct in action and when he is issuing false bravado. All men are the same except for their belief in their own selves, regardless of what others may think of them. The supervisor on a construction job must assign tasks to his men according to their known abilities. Who is good at what specific aspect of the project? Who can lay floors? Who can tile the roof? Connect the drainage system? Should this not also be true for warriors? The warrior leader must understand himself before he can understand the realities of commanding others to do his bidding, especially when teaching is involved. Only when each soldier has been observed and can only when each soldier has been observed can the commander know which warrior will be able to perform a specific act. Otherwise, only chaos can result. The supervisor of a job should circulate among his men to appraise their strengths and weaknesses. He must praise them where they earn praise and admonish them where they do not fulfill the requirements of the job. But he must praise and admonish equally or there will be a loss of morale and the job may not be finished correctly. Likewise, the commander must walk among his men if he is to expect a certain level of performance. If he is unaware of the skills of each warrior, how can he know whom to assign tasks? The commander must praise and admonish in the same manner. This is a virtue of strategy. Why would a commander want a spearman to join a line of archers? Even if there is tremendous spirit on the part of the spearman, with no experience with the bow, his best efforts can only be mediocre. What the way of strategy is. 
A warrior is responsible for his own weapons just as a craftsman is responsible for his own tools. It is simply not possible to get good results without the necessary respect for one's tools or one's weapons. Time must be devoted to training, practicing, and maintaining one's tools or weapons, however gifted a man may be. Each aspect of the craft must be examined over and over again without regard for time and energy spent, whether physically or mentally. The spirit of the thing is what will guide a man to his own greatness. There is no way that can be approached and petitioned for immediate gratification. The universe does not work that way. How could it, and at the same time, expect any perfection to develop? If you permit the spirit to permeate your being, the spirit will permeate through you by permitting you to be its instrument. When the warrior becomes skilled and understands his chosen weapon, when he cares for them with a sense of oneness, knowing they are used to defeat enemies, he can be self-assured as a warrior. He can then become a commander. A craftsman must likewise understand the spirit of his tools. He must care for them as for his very own self. Only then can he meld with them to become the end product. That is what is meant by the sword being the soul of the samurai. A warrior must be proficient in all of the tools of his trade. He should understand the functions of all weapons and the functions of all military regimentation. A lancer, a lancer should understand the sword. A Kempoist should understand jiu-jitsu technique, and a doctor should know carpentry. How else could they meet the unexpected without knowing how the opposition weapons could work? Or, what? A Lancer should understand the sword, a Kempoist should understand jiu-jitsu technique, and a doctor should know carpentry. How else could they meet the unexpected without knowing how the opponent's, how the opposition's weapons work? It is also suggested that the warrior familiarize himself with the actual workings of other weapons. In this way, a foreign attack will not overwhelm him with its technique, even if it has never been encountered before. Constantly study constant study of every aspect of the warrior's craft is essential to understanding the true value of one's particular skills. This is what the ancients meant when they said to think deeply about things. This is another way to grow in your skills. For example, what would your reaction be if you were studying one craft of warriorness and then found out that you truly enjoyed working with a different weapon. Contemplate the reality of this. Do not make the mistake of thinking that it is sufficient to finish one section of a job without having planned its continuation. If you are going to construct a desk, you must plan for drawers, knobs, etc. If not, the work may appear to be aesthetically pleasing but in reality be disharmonious with the universe. Masters plan for contingency even when it appears that they are only improvising. The presentation of an idea, apparently improvised, is only valid if there has been adequate study and preparation on the part of the teacher who can then deliver the information in the proper sequences. A master achieves the way by being devoted to the art, while the art itself reveals its true identity to a warrior only when this thing when the spirit of the thing itself feels comfortable with the warrior as a vehicle for its own expression if you wish to learn my way of strategy you must do sufficient research and study doing sufficient research means that you must devote yourself as much as possible to the study of these ideas to the degree with which you feel that you will have accomplished that which you wanted to accomplish the level of commitment that you give to it will indicate to it what to reveal of itself to you. I knew that I was going to do I knew what I was going to do when I began this book, and my steadfast devotion permitted the spirit of the thing itself to 
reduce the results. The meaning of the five parts of this book of strategy. The name of this book is Five Rings. Buddhist teachings contain the five elements of the universe. Earth, water, fire, wind, and nothingness. In the book of Earth, the strategy of my school is explained. You are being told the reasons for my writing as well as their structure. You must not depend on understanding your art only by studying one art with which you are involved. It is difficult to understand the universe if you study only one planet. One must be aware of all the art be aware of all the arts by becoming familiar with many of them as part of one's complete devotion to one of them. Endeavor to know all things. Though you cannot ever do this, you will become more aware of the world around you, an essential strategy if you choose to be a warrior. In the Book of Water, I explain that water fills all shapes and eventually wears down any form of captivity. I clearly explain what my Ichi school proposes for the study of strategy. There are many ways to understand simple things, but generally, generally the opposite is true for difficult ideas. Study what I say with the desire to understand my way of strategy. When you have mastered the basics of sword fighting, you will be able to beat one man or many men. The result would be the same if you were fighting a countless horde so long as your strength remained with you. The amount of strength you have depends on your training and practice you have put into your art. It is important to remember that all things can only be built from the ground up and in one stage at a time. Spirit is a thing that must be concentrated upon. To know 10,000 things, know one well. It is difficult to understand these ideas broadly through the use of words. The realities are mostly intuitive. The proper attitude of spirit must be constantly studied. The Book of Water explains the specifics. The Book of Water explains the specifics and particulars of my Ichi school. The Book of Fire is about fighting. When a man fights in real combat, his spirit becomes fierce. There is time for the spirit to be large and time for the spirit to be small. In order to understand, in order to be able to determine the possible outcomes of combat situations, you must constantly maintain the proper attitude by practicing diligently. You can only fight the way you practice. By maintaining the proper attitude, you will always practice diligently with the proper spirit and ensure your ability to become that much stronger. Through practice, you will be able to properly maintain yourself at all times. It is hard to perceive small movements in an enemy, but it is easy to see large movements in many men. When studying the art of strategy, it is necessary to practice day and night. I cannot stress this enough. You will come to realize what I am saying as the way of strategy. Your normal life must be a life of strategy. Full combat and battle is explained in this book. Your spirit must remain unchanged as long as you study, as long as you live the life of the warrior. The Book of Wind concerns itself with the strategies and teachings of other schools and the traditions of the past. There are obvious differences and there are differences that are not so easy to ascertain. One must be careful not to study traditional methods that diverge from the true teachings of the path. I make the differences very clear and easy to understand. A slight error in judgment while at sea can throw you miles off course. You must constantly study your way to ensure that you do not lose your way. It is very easy to be sidetracked from the direct method. You must understand what I am talking about when the differences between the Ichi school and the others are explained. It is not wrong to think that methods that only teach sword fighting are incorrect, but the advantage of my Ichi school style of two sword fighting lies in its mental and physical technique. 
with the advantage of Maiichi School's style of two-sword fighting lies in its mental and physical technique. To learn technique is essential, however strategic thinking has its own principles and they can be applied to anything that has to do with war and combat. In this way, the Ichi School breaks from traditional teaching. It is easy to understand the first four books of the Five Rings. Introductory remarks concerning the outline of the five books should be understood upon simple review. Nothing profound is revealed in the introduction. The basic idea of the way of strategy is the attitude of being or not being, and will be expanded upon. However, in the book of nothingness, you will learn that the way of strategy is also the way of nature, and that there is no difference except for what we ourselves conceive or misconceive as truth. When you understand the way of strategy, you will be able to hit a man without a thought in a completely natural manner. There is a sound approach to understanding the entire subject. The Book of Nothingness is also the shortest of the written tracks, and it is at the same time both simple and difficult to comprehend. Why I call my school One Way, Two Swords It is common for a warrior to carry two swords. One is a long sword and the other is a short sword. The names for the swords vary from place to place and time to time. My school teaches the proper use of both swords in combat, even though a warrior can rely on either one or the other. My school teaches the proper use of both swords in combat teaches the proper use of both swords in combat even though a warrior can rely on either one or the other. Spears, lances, and bows with arrows are generally used out of doors, as is the sword. Swords are used indoors and outdoors, but mainly for close combat. You must be able to wield the sword in any situation. The comparison between halberds spears, bows, and arrows is evident and makes perfect sense in the context of a combat situation. The sword is easier to deal with regardless of the terrain where you happen to be fighting. At the beginning of training, lances, spears, and other weapons are certain to prove difficult, especially if you have never had practice with them. But in time, all things work to your advantage when you pursue them with an open heart. I insist that my students start their training with both swords in either hand. In a combat situation, you must understand how to make complete use of your weapons. Any other reasoning is foolish. If you are going to die in battle, then you should do so with the utmost respectability and dignity. It is a terrible shame to die in a battle with your sword undrawn or yourself unable to use it correctly. Because my system employs both swords, a warrior must hold the sword in one hand. It is hard to use a sword correctly when it is held with both hands. You are also limited to the use of one sword when the other sword remains passive. A drawn weapon is a killing device and must be used as such. It is not for play. Whatever your determination or willpower, it is foolish to try and change the nature of things. Things work the way they do because that is the way of things. The warrior should fully understand the nature of the weapon he is using. The long sword is used in a broad manner and the short sword for in close combat. Your choice of weapons does not make much difference if you understand their nature. You must also understand the purpose of their existence as well. Once this is done, you will then be able to wield any weapon that you have trained with if you have trained with all your heart. The main idea of my way of strategy is to win. There is nothing else. The following is a philosophical truth. One thing does one thing, two things do four things. 
think this through. If you are fighting a crowd or controlling a group, it is better to use two swords than one. It is very hard to explain these ideas in detail because of their intuitive nature. Once you have understood the depth of the thing you are studying, the spirit of all things will reveal itself to you. To master the longsword is to be a master of strategy in my school. As I have mentioned before, the sword has long been called the soul of the warrior. There is a closeness between the warrior and his weapon. All weapons are warrior's equipment and part of strategy. When a warrior is master of the longsword, he can rule the world. He can certainly be ten men or more in combat. To further illustrate my point, consider the unarmed warrior as being even closer to the ideal because no weapon other than empty hands is used. To go still further, consider the attitude of thing no thing, an attitude which must not be confused with the concept of nothing, which is still something by definition. The sword is a physical object and is feared by most men, warriors are not. The craft of the warrior, in his way, is the only thing that deals directly with physical living and physical dying. Other arts do not, except like doctors and a thousand other things. <laughs> to understand the universe, one must be in accord with the truths of other matters in order to understand more deeply the conviction needed to pursue the way of the warrior. Other ways do not deal with life and death. They deal with the ideas that may or may not be acceptable to others. There is a significant difference between beating a man intellectually and physically taking his life. We live in a physical world and we are governed by much more and we are governed much more by the things that can affect us physically than by psychological browbeating. The advantage of using weapons and strategy. Each weapon has its own spirit. Each weapon must be used in the, its proper place in order to be effective and enable the handler of the weapon to take advantage of its properties. The ultimate weapon is thing no thing. In addition to physical weapon, consider the f use of empty hands to be the ultimate physical weapon. Now consider the use of empty mind. You must study with the idea in mind of being able to function in any situation with any weapon. If you study hard and understand the properties of all weapons, they may be used effectively in any situation. Attack weapons like the spear and bow are good at the onset of an attack, but of virtually Attack weapons like the spear and bow are good at the onset of an attack, but become virtually useless when involved with up-close combat. This does not mean that the bow is entirely useless. Remember to read with the understanding and, and to keep in mind that the weapons that are used in warfare... Remember to read with understanding and to keep in mind the weapons that are used in warfare. As new weapons are developed, they should also be studied with the proper intent of the warrior, which is the master strategy. <laughs> the gun is a formidable weapon, has no equal at the beginning of an onslaught, but it becomes useless in combat at close quarters, because of the difficulty of reloading. The lance and spear must be used at a distance, and the bow is of no use in close combat either. Consider the time you are living in and the weapons available to you. As times change and new weapon as times change and new weapons are made available to you, you must continue to study the nature of these weapons and learn to work with them in learning my strategy. The weapon is a tool to be used 
The weapon is a tool to be used efficiently and effectively, otherwise it will be of little value, even in the hands of a master. With a long sword or with empty hands, the stance should be strong. The cuts, strikes, punches, and kicks strong, and the spirit unyielding in the face of battle. This will depend on the amount of heart you have put into your training and practice. Weapons may have decorations on them to enhance the spirit of the warrior, but they should be primarily built for durability. It is dangerous for a warrior to know only one thing. Weapons have decorations on them to enhance the spirit of the warrior, but they should primarily be built for durability. It is dangerous for a warrior to know only one thing. It will eventually create short-sightedness and limit the possibilities for additional growth. What is the sense of knowing a thing to such a degree that you become oblivious to other things? If you constantly disregard the possibility of other methods and tools, then you become short-sighted and may in fact lose the advantage of your own strength. That is why the warrior must learn the techniques of other schools and apply that information to the system being studied here. Why timing is important in strategy. There are good times and there are bad times for everything. When you understand timing, then you also understand rhythm. Timing and rhythm, they are one and the same thing, yet they are different. To understand them both as one, you must understand them individually. It is absolutely essential to understand the timing of universal harmony as well. <coughs> Timing can be altered. Rhythm can be altered. They can be altered individually or in unison. You must understand that in order to restructure time, you should have a complete understanding and realization of the universe, or else your own substance will be infected with error, and you will not be able to perform properly in battles of any type. I cannot stress enough that this comes with constant practice. Understanding timing and rhythm is essential to my strategy. You should always train with timing and rhythm uppermost in your mind, and realize that there are different types of timing and different types of rhythm. Understand them well, and you will understand my way of strategy. End Notes to the Book of Earth it must be understood that training is never completed. When the warrior thinks that training is over, he will find that the spirit of the thing itself he has been studying will elude him and fail to provide him with any further revelations. He must never stop training. In this way, the spirit of the warrior will continue to grow. The way of the warrior is the way of life. The way of the warrior is a way of life and can never be construed as a hobby, unless you are seeking only to impress others with your technique. You must never stop studying the written passages of masters relating to the arts you have chosen to practice, nor should you stop studying other arts that the warrior studies to broaden his horizons. The heart is essential in helping the intellect to understand the spirit. If you do not have a map in an unfamiliar terrain, how can you hope to get where you want to go without difficulty? Even if you have directions, you may still have to negotiate roadblocks along the way. Likewise, if you do not set your mind and heart on the required principles, how can you ever hope to understand what it is you are trying to accomplish? It is important for the warrior to constantly meditate upon these things. One. Think honestly within yourself in dealings, in your dealings with all men. Constant training is the only way to learn strategy. Become familiar with every art you come across. Understand the way of other disciplines. Know the difference between right and wrong in matters of men. 
strive for inner judgment and an understanding of everything. See that which cannot be seen. Overlook nothing regardless of its insignificance. And do not waste time idling or thinking after you have set your goals. The nine basic attitudes I have listed are essential for freeing your spirit from negative thoughts that would interfere with your journey. They must be thought about constantly. You must take them into your heart. Once you have accepted the need to study these attitudes, you can proceed with deliberateness, diligence, and comfort. You will be able to beat many men just by looking them in the eye. They will realize that you are, for, you are a formidable opponent and will not have the heart to attack. Remember timing. Do not forget harmony with the universe and self. Remember that continuous study is essential for approaching perfection in the chosen art. Although some people may appear to be there, they too must continually deal with change based on the rise and fall of timing and rhythm. However, through devotion to the way of your art, you can remove yourself from the general mass of people and be able to concentrate more effectively on your chosen way. It is also essential to remember the need for function in society. It is also essential to understand it is also essential to remember the need to function in society, good or bad, and that in order for your way to be successful, you must interact with society. If you wish to control others, you must first control yourself. That is why it is necessary to study con continuously. This is the essence of my strategy. So ends the book of Earth.